Hey photographers! The Nikon Z7 delivers 45 megapixels of card-devouring, full-frame photo goodness, so you want to make sure your photos are sharp. Now, with some hands-on demonstrations, I'm going to show you how to use the many focus settings to get great results. The focus system in the Z6 is nearly identical, Z50 also very similar. What you see in this video will work on those models also. Since the initial release in November 2018, Nikon has continued to work on this camera, not by introducing a Mark II or III, but by improving the firmware as free downloadable updates. I've just updated to the February 2020 release, version 3.0. Now Each release has improved the focus features and functionality. If you haven't updated, the link is in the description. I'm going to review all of the focus settings. We'll start with simple and useful and work our way up to complicated and best. I'll give you all the details on using face and eye detect and how to use tracking effectively. And then I'll show you how to focus manually. Finally, go over focus shift, bracketing, and stacking. Now this is the Z7 with the 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens. I'm using this lens because it provides some additional focus features like an LCD to display distance and other settings as well as an assignable function key, which takes focus to a whole new level. Now there's only one switch on this lens, auto or manual focus. Make sure it's on A. The easiest focus tool is touch. On the left side of the screen, press the touch button until the screen says touch AF on. And if you want tap and snap, select touch shutter AF on. The Z7 will focus where you touch and with touch shutter, take the photo when you remove your finger. Or leave it on focus only and press the shutter button to snap. Whichever you choose, by default, the camera will only take a photo when it can focus on an object. I'll show you how to override that in a minute. If you prefer to shoot with the viewfinder, the Z7 has two focus controls, when the camera focuses and where it focuses. Of course, all of these controls work when you're shooting with the LCD also. When you put your eye to the viewfinder, Pull out the dial beside and adjust the diopter to your prescription. Then press I and the I menu appears. Both focus controls are on the far right. Bottom right is mode. That's the when. Single focuses once and is useful for most situations. Soft press the shutter or the AF on key and the focus area turns green to show what's in focus. There are five where options. With auto area, the Z7 selects the most likely object, and that's usually the object closest to the camera. One or more green rectangles light up. The red bounding area shows the limits of the autofocus area. The four remaining options provide various sizes for a selectable focus area. These can all be positioned, most easily using the focus joystick, but touch works here also. After you've moved the focus area, press OK to return it to center. This is the size for wide large. It can be moved to a 7x7 seven seven grid. The size for wide small is smaller and covers a 27x15 grid. Single point is smaller still, but as a result, much more accurate to focus on a subject's eye, for example. The larger the aperture, the more you want to make the focus point as accurate as you can. The grid for single point is 29 by 17, or 493 points. Pinpoint is smaller still and doesn't focus quite as fast as single point. I didn't bother to count the grid here. My preferred setting is single autofocus with single point AF or wide area small, and mostly I leave the point in the center, soft press to focus, hold the soft press to compose the image, and snap when I've got the shot. The alternate to holding the soft press is to press the joystick. That locks focus and exposure. 
and if my subject is predictably off-center, I'll move the focus spot as needed. Custom setting A5 can make focus point navigation faster by skipping over every other point. And A9 can wrap the focus point selection, so when you get to the top, bottom, or sides, the cursor skips around to the other side. Use custom setting A8 to limit the number of area selections. If you're frequently changing the area size, Use custom setting F2 and assign one of the function buttons to focus mode area mode. Then, when you press the button, as displayed in yellow on the right side of this screen, the front dial can be used to change the area and the back dial the mode. On the viewfinder and LCD, the display is at the top of the screen. With the auto area setting, by default, A4, face and eye detection, is on. You can disable it, revert to face only, or alternately use animal to identify dogs and cats. With an, face detect looks like this, a rectangle appears around the face. Then face and eye looks like this, first it identifies the face, then the eye. Switch eyes using the cursor keys. That also works in face detect with multiple faces, or with face eye detect, to select which eye. Eye detect doesn't work in video mode. I tried animal detection with Marley and Milo. It works the same <laughs> and manages to identify Diane at the same time. I've been soft pressing the shutter to focus and the AF on key is an alternate to using the shutter's soft press to focus before you snap with the shutter button or use F2 to assign the lenses function key to AF on. Using my left hand to focus and my right hand to snap is absolutely liberating. Incidentally, if you are using either of these keys to focus, consider using A7 to disable the shutter focus interconnect. Now pressing the shutter doesn't focus. This technique, which is helpful if you don't need to focus with each shutter press, is called back button focus. With auto area, you may notice the OK crosshairs button. Press OK and a square appears which can track objects. This square can be moved on an 8x9 grid in the center of the screen. While it's excellent at tracking, the Z7 still requires you to press whichever key you're using to focus. When you do, in single mode anyway, the point locks and stops tracking. Let's switch to continuous focus mode. Once activated, while you're holding the key you're using to focus, the camera both tracks and focuses. When it's released, the spot returns to center. Now, there's no green in focus indication in continuous and no pinpoint, but a new selection, dynamic area autofocus, is added. In this mode, the area will expand if the subject is slightly outside the defined area. Custom setting A3 controls the speed of refocus after a subject is locked on. Delayed stays with the subject as the distraction enters. Quick changes to the passing object. Now, if you don't want the Z7 to release until it's in focus, change A1, the continuous setting, to focus. That may slow your burst, but will improve your focus. Turn custom setting A11 on to improve autofocus in low light situations. If the green autofocus assist illumination is distracting, A12 can disable that. Uh, manual focus is useful when you're maintaining a constant distance to your subject and don't need the camera to refocus for every shot. It's also good to stop focus from wandering or adjusting while you're shooting video. I recommend that you use the menu to switch it on and not the switch on the lens. And this is a good moment to have a look at the 24-70 f2.8 S lens, which features an LCD display window. Press DISP to see the focal length, the aperture, and the focus distance. And in addition to zoom and focus, the lens has a third ring. By default, it sets the aperture. Use F2 custom menu to change it to set exposure compensation 
or ISO. And there are also options to set the brightness and select imperial or metric measure. As most lenses no longer have this, it's nice to be able to see the focus distance, although greater accuracy would be nice. What would also be nice is the ability to use defined travel or linear focus, making a specific position on the focus ring a specific focal distance. In manual focus mode, turn the lens's focus ring. A distance ruler appears, and the arrow's bottom left will assist you. The white spot indicates you have focus, and the focus area will turn green. If you need more assistance, use the zoom keys for an expanded view or punch-in. The custom setting D10 provides peaking highlights with three levels of sensitivity and four color options. The colored outline indicates the edges of the object which is in focus. It can be distracting, so best to assign this feature to a custom button to easily turn it on and off. Switching to video provides one more focus mode, full-time AF. Combined with touch, it will continuously focus to the position of the focus point, nicely switching focus from one subject to another. G4 and G5 provide two video-specific adjustments to the autofocus speed and the tracking sensitivity. G4 controls how quickly focus switches or racks with a setting that engages only while recording. This is fast. This is slow. Both seem pretty instantaneous to me. G5 controls the response to changes. Small objects, particularly at large apertures, can be notoriously hard to focus. While it's not a technique that works for situations with movement, focus bracketing or focus shift shooting changes the focus slightly as multiple images are taken. Useful options include creating a new folder for the images. It does require a bit of trial and error to find the right number of shots and an appropriate step width to capture what you need. And for this scene, I used 15 shots taken with a step width of 7 to cover the tulip vase front to back. The peaking option creates a confirmation image. The sequence starts from the menu and after preparing, the screen is black while the images are taken. In playback, use the I menu to display the peaking stack image. This confirms the edges are in focus. You can either choose the image that suits you best or take them into Photoshop to create a focus stack to bring the entire object into focus. You'll find plenty of tutorials to show you how. There are a few more focus-related settings in the Custom Settings menu. Use A6 if you are positioning your focus point and alternate between shooting portrait and landscape orientation. A10 provides options to display the focus point in manual focus or to turn off display of the extended area in dynamic focus mode. A13 allows manual focus adjustments when the camera is in autofocus mode. Uh, this last scene is recorded on the Z7 with autofocus, face and eye detect on. I would not usually recommend this setting for video, but for the Z7 it works well. You'll see that the face detection is reliable and that the autofocus doesn't make micro adjustments to the background or the foreground while recording. And I hope that covers everything, but if you have questions, please post your relevant questions and civil comments below. Practicing your craft will help you learn and improve. Go out and shoot until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. And if this channel and my content pleases you, take advantage of our free subscription offer, which has just been extended to the end of the month.